The goal of this video isn't to create confusion or doubt. Therefore, I purposely avoided any unnecessary information or techno babble. What I mean by that is there's a lot of stuff you will eventually learn on your own. And as for the industry terms and such, we'll deal with the ones I'm sure you're going to run across. The rest, trust me, in time, you'll learn it all. This is my book. It's called Freestyle Promotions and the Seven Simple Steps to Getting Started. And these are the seven steps that I'm going to walk you through in just a moment. Step number one is the booking agent, and you'll find out shortly why I made this the first step. Step number two, funding your event. 90% of the time, people are going to blame lack of funds as the reason for not pursuing a career in club promotions. Step number three. Choosing the club. Many times when new promoters call me about booking acts, it's usually because they were suddenly offered a spot, either very cheap or even for free. And though that can help out tremendously, you still need to do a little homework before moving forward. And I'll explain that in a bit. Step number four, choosing the right artists, which means that there are also wrong artists. So there are quite a few factors that should be considered before choosing the artists. Step number five, promoting your event. The fun stuff, well, it could be, but that all depends on how you handle the last four steps. Step number six, showtime. So is this it? Is this what you've been working so hard to accomplish? Well, that depends on whether or not you decide to do it again. If this is your one and only event, then sit back and enjoy the show. But if you plan on doing it again, then your job has only just begun. And step number seven, let's do it again. If you do not plan on doing this again, then in reality, you only need to follow six out of seven steps. But if you want to do it again, then step seven actually becomes the first step to your next event. Now, let me make this clear. When you go over this, you're going to feel like something's missing, and that's only because you will expect it to be more difficult than it really is. But in reality, what you see is what you get. There are no hidden meanings in any of this. It's really that simple. Okay, so let's begin. Whenever you hear the word agent, whether it's a travel agent, a real estate agent, or in this case, a booking agent, it usually refers to a professional middleman or woman who basically moderates the deal between two entities. In travel, this will be the person that would help you find the best deal for your next vacation or business trip. Their expertise attracts the travelers who want a hassle-free experience. With real estate agents, the detailed and intimidating process is simplified and expedited to make sure all sides are clear and satisfied. And the same goes with the booking agent. And yes, I'm a booking agent. My name is Latif Mercado, and I run an agency called La Entertainment. I've been in business for well over 25 years, and I have thousands of freestyle events under my belt. Shows that I've worked one-on-one -on -one with some of the absolute best club and concert promoters in this genre. As a freestyle event booking agent, I would be the trusted liaison between the promoters and the artists, and my ultimate job was and still is to make the booking process trouble-free so that the deal can close quickly and the promoter can immediately get to work promoting the next successful freestyle event. Booking agents are the neutral ground for both sides, and their goal should be to moderate a deal that both sides are happy with. Look, everyone would love a deal that favors them, but as an agent, it's important for the success of all involved that everyone walks away a winner. Booking agents are still a very important part of the entertainment industry. Their years of experience and reputation among their peers carry a lot of weight, and it's important that they are trusted by both sides. Sometimes artists rather not use an agent. It's usually because they prefer not to pay the small 10% commission required by most agents. But what they fail to realize is that not only do agents book the shows, 
Many of them are also responsible for recommending the acts being booked, and why shouldn't they? Because an artist that does well for an agent will surely be recommended to others, as the agent's primary goal is to moderate events that will be successful for both sides. Who better knows the market than a booking agent, especially one who's been supplying it with artists for many years? Their job is to send freestyle acts to the various cities around the country and abroad. And then following up on the success or failure of such events, this provides them with invaluable information that they can later share with their promoters and future events. For promoters, the agents are even more important. Through them, the promoters have not only access to practically any artist in the genre, but it also comes with consultation through experience, and one that doesn't cost the promoter anything. Now, what can be better than that? The first call should always be the agent because if anyone can help you get started, it would be them. They can tell you things like what artists work well in what markets, which artists can best fit your budget. And though flying without a booking agent might make sense for some of the artists seeing that they wouldn't have to pay a commission no matter what, it's always going to involve some sort of risk. I did ask one promoter who always booked his artists direct why he does it. He literally told me that he likes to fraternize with the artists. I actually ran into that promoter not too long ago, still out there doing his thing. But for the club promoter, take advantage of the opportunity to fly safe and comfortably. There is absolutely nothing you can tell me that would justify you ever booking without an agent, especially since it's for free. The part of this process that most people are worried about is, to me, the most simplest to overcome, and that's funding your event. The reason being funding an event isn't just throwing money away. It's an investment to make more money. The first event, you might have to be a bit more creative. But have a successful event, and believe me, people are going to start tearing down your door just to invest their money with you. But in order for you to know just how much you need for a show, you have to first create a budget. Now, these budgets don't have to be difficult. In fact, you can design your budget however makes sense to you. First, write down a list of absolutely everything that would normally cost you money, even if you know you are getting the item or service for free. The reason being is even though it's for free, it still has value, and that's what you need to know. If you aren't sure how much it would cost exactly, a good guesstimate would work just fine. Whether it's a dollar or a thousand, remember everything at this point counts. Hotels, ground transportation, flights. Sound equipment rentals, such as monitors, mics, lights, anything you can possibly think of. Your agent will help you with an estimate on the artist's fee, possibly even travel and hotel accommodations. The cool thing about this is once you put in the time needed to draft a tight budget, every other show you put together at that same location will pretty much require the same exact budget. Now, total everything up and that is your budget. Look, if anything... Regarding the budget confuses you, don't worry, I break it all down in a simple to understand budgeting template included in your exec pack. Simply fill in the blanks and you'll be on your way. I've seen it over and over again. New promoters deciding they want to start promoting simply because someone offered them a night at their club, whether for free or not. That situation can go two ways. It could end up being a perfect one, putting you on the fast lane to a successful and very lucrative career as a freestyle club promoter, or you can crash and burn, never wanting to ever try it again, and that is definitely not the objective we are looking for. In your package, I included the 10 red flags of choosing a nightclub. Please keep referencing that list and don't brush off any of it, at least not yet. Once you get in a little more time, you'll be able to experiment. But in the meantime, the 10 red flags will help you monitor whether a club is too small, too big, is in a safe neighborhood, is the parking situation crazy, and most importantly, are the neighbors going to be cool or be a problem, along with other red flags to avoid. Look, all I'm trying to do is make your first event run as smooth as it possibly can and help you pull from it a profit so that you are excited to do it again. Once you put on a few events and get a true feel for the job, it's then that you'll be able to go against some of the rules. In fact, when the time comes, I'm going to encourage you to break some rules because that will be the only way you'll be able to grow. And let's face it, as cliche as the saying goes, it's true. The bigger the risk, the bigger the reward.
But for right now, these are the seven simple steps that will get you up and moving ahead. Now, this part right here, I've seen become the cause to so many problems, and it usually occurs way in the beginning. In fact, so far in the beginning that it occurs at the mere thought of promoting a show. When I first began booking acts, though I had seen practically everyone perform, I never gave much thought to the markets and who did well and where. If a promoter asked for a particular act, I simply booked it, and that was that. And sometimes they would ask for a recommendation, and I usually chose acts according to my own relationships with them. If we were cool, I tried to place them wherever I could, regardless of whether or not it was their market. It wasn't until years later when I realized that different markets preferred different acts. In the long run, it sort of worked in my favor. Because had I known that at the start, my personal acts, such as Lil Susie and the Cover Girls, probably wouldn't have covered as many markets as they do now. Now, going back to how and why many of the problems begin at the mere thought of putting on an event is mainly because promoters usually have the tendency to go after artists that they themselves are fans of. Now, let me tell you how that can be a problem. Number one, the chances of you choosing an artist that sits somewhere in the top five or ten most requested artists is very likely which will obviously make them expensive, at least for the size club you're starting off with. And I'm not just talking about their fee, but also everything else that's a part of booking them. Look, eventually you will get there, but not yet. Besides, you don't want to have to sell high-priced tickets. You want your ticket prices to be affordable and what your audience is accustomed to paying. Just because a particular act comes off as being popular doesn't guarantee that they can even pack an elevator, let alone a club. Now, if you've been doing this for quite a while, you might have a better idea as to who works good where. And if not, don't worry about it. Your agent should know. So, once again, there's another important reason to first contact your agent, even if it's just to pick his or her brains. Okay, so you got your agent, got your club. Money's in the bank, and you are in contract with your artist. Now the fun begins, and that means promoting. And unlike it was back in the days, these days this process is a lot easier. Now, when I say easy, I mean the actual process, what exactly you need to do. But where the hard work comes in is being consistent, persistent, and diligent. There are one of two things you need to promote your show effectively. You either need money or you need time. If you have both, great. But if the money you have is needed elsewhere, don't sweat it. You have time. And yeah, money's going to help you move a bit quicker. Time is going to give you the type of experience that no money could ever buy. Social media has been a godsend for the independent promoter. Why? Because it's free and gives you direct access to your audience. One of the first things that you want to do, in fact, you should have been doing it already, Joining Facebook groups that cater to your audience. And believe me, when it comes to freestyle music on Facebook, there's plenty. Now, other social media such as Twitter and Instagram are great also. But when it comes to freestyle, Facebook is king, at least at the time of this video. So if you find your time limited and unable to engage on multiple platforms, make Facebook your primary stop. But go hard. Now, let's talk about spam. No, not that kind of spam. This kind. You see, this type of spam can have a very negative effect on your business. So here are just a couple of things you want to avoid. And yes, it might come across as less aggressive than you would otherwise prefer. But in the long run, it's going to help you win the race. And let me clarify what I mean about race. First off, do not treat Facebook or any social platform as if you're running the 50-yard dash. Consider them more like cross-country runs. It might take you more time to get where you're going, but at the end, you would have covered much more territory. With that said, the first thing I would advise is that you tag only people who are working directly with you, or at least people who show a real interest in what you are doing. And please, don't just assume that everyone is interested because chances are they're not. Secondly, 
Don't share your event flyer or info on other people's pages unless they ask you to. And if you do just once, it's sufficient. I call these people page invaders, and they annoy the hell out of me. Groups are usually cool with some promo on their pages, but maybe once a week, and that's it. And I would still try and reach out to the admin and ask permission. And when you do post on people's pages and groups, Scroll through and make sure your posts aren't overwhelming. In fact, I would go as far as deleting any of the older ones. You'll be much more appreciated and your posts would be much more welcomed. Instead of posting your flyer a thousand times because you think that's what you're supposed to do, instead, post it once and then spend the time engaging with those who have shown interest. If you did everything else right, then this day should leave you with very little to do. The driver will bring the artist to your club. Security will escort them to the VIP. Between the DJ and the artist's road manager, sound system should be ready to go. Your job now will be to pay the artist the balance. And if you're hosting the show, go ahead and introduce the artist to the stage. So now while the artist is on stage doing their thing, what you should be doing is taking mental notes. Don't be concerned with writing stuff down. Trust me. Anything that you feel needs to be remembered will be remembered. How's the sound? Is there enough room on the stage? Is the lighting efficient? Is there adequate security? Are the people enjoying themselves? Come on. Don't just stand there singing along. You're on the job. Okay, so the show is over. Artist is off the stage, signed some autographs, and we're brought back to the hotel. Club is closing, and security is clearing everyone out. You picked up your money from the box office, paid your crew, and now you're headed home. Now what? What do you do? And should what you do depend in any way on the success of your event? Well, I say it shouldn't, because no show ever completed is a complete flop. Let me explain. In the unlikely event that your show didn't do as well as you had hoped, if you can sit down within the first 24 hours either by yourself, with your partner, spouse, or the entire crew and talk about what might have went wrong, why did it go wrong, and how can we make sure it doesn't happen again, then the money that you think you lost will instead become the greatest investment of your promotional career. Speaking of which, I created the post-show prognosis diagnosis checklist. So make sure to fill that out. You'll be glad you did. Look, people go to college for years and spend sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars only to end up on the unemployment line. So whether it's a loss of money or time, rest assured that you are in good company. And besides, the only way that you will ever be considered a loser is if you quit. Well, folks, that pretty much sums it up. Oh, and trust me, I can go on for hours about this, but all that will do is overwhelm you with information that you really don't need to know at the moment. But what I do recommend is that you go through this again every so often, or at least until you get through your first event. Like I said at the beginning, this isn't to be trivia. It is straightforward and meant for you to get it on your first walkthrough. If you have any questions, please post them in the Facebook group for others to read and possibly help answer. We're trying to build a supportive community of freestyle promoters, and I want you to be a part of that. Look, I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough, and I really look forward to watching you grow as a freestyle club promoter. Now go get them.